this is such a fun job, you know? And as a little person, I do try to make my act relatable to people, you know, and let people realize we're not all that different despite the whole height thing. And one of the situations that I encountered, it actually happened 10 years ago, and I actually had to start talking about it on stage. And I was working in a comedy club in the northwest part of America. And I was at the back of the room. My support act was on stage. And my opening act is there, and I'm having a bite to eat, like a BLT and a Diet Coke. And I'm a couple of mouthfuls into my sandwich, and my stomach starts making a lot of noise, a lot of rumble from down under. And I know from previous experience, I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, where are the toilets? They're like, you gotta go through the door and through the foyer, so I'm just fucking booking. <laughs> And the owner's girlfriend, she's in the foyer, and she's like, hey, Tanya Lee, I want to introduce you to my parents. I'm like, not now! <laughs> so when I get into the toilets, there's three stalls, and they're all taken, right? So now I'm crouched down on the ground. I'm labor breathing. I've got that face, you know that? <laughs> the woman in the middle in the middle stall comes out kind of a heavy set woman with a red sequin top she sees me crouched down on the ground i'm like hey <laughs> so she, she comes out and i go into the stall i close the door and i close the door and i pull down my trousers and i'm doing a bit of a dance right doing a bit of a dance because i have a dilemma my dilemma is how do i get on the toilet seat <laughs> Because obviously I have a system, right? Normally what I would normally do is put one ass cheek on side of the toilet, right? And I would sort of throw myself up onto it. Well, that's not going to work when you're clenching your butt chocks as tightly as possible. So I'm like saying, going, okay, think 10, think 10. What am I going to do? And you don't think very clearly, right? Because I'm under a lot of pressure. Inside and out, you don't think clearly when you're under a lot of pressure. So I'm like, okay, what are my options here? I'm like, oh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go head first. I'll go head first, and then I can flip myself around, right? <laughs> so of course I have to wait. I have to wait for the cramp to pass. I have to wait for the cramp to pass, and then I'm like, okay. So I go head first. I get my knee up under the seat. I thrust myself forward, and that's when my ass exploded. <laughs> I shot out like a party pooper in New Year's, just <laughs> I hit the door on the sides of the stall and it just started dripping. Of course, everything was in slow motion to me. I was like, Nyeh! It wasn't until I heard the screams of the two women on either side of me, just like, ah! As they went running out of the toilets, that I jumped it into reality and I was like, oh my God, no! So my first instinct, grab a bunch of loo roll, right? And I start wiping down the stall and I'm wiping down the doors and everything. And then it occurred to me, oh my God, now I'm in here by myself, right? Nobody can come in here. What if somebody comes in? Nobody can see this shit, right? <laughs> so I go running to the door of the toilets and I'm holding it closed going, oh my God, what am I going to do? I need some help. And I thought, oh, the owner's girlfriend. Maybe she's still out in the foyer, right? So I open the door. I'm like, hey, Christine, I need a mop. So Christine comes to the door. Of course, I have to explain to her, ooh, I had a bit of an accident, right? And so she opens the door, she looks around, and she's like, <laughs> and then she fucks off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, no, you can't leave me hanging. I can't do this on my own, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, God, oh, God. I'm having a panic attack. It seemed like an eternity. It was probably only a couple of minutes. It seems like forever. There was a knock on the door. Some woman, I don't even recognize, pops her head in the door. She's like, hi, I'm Christine's mom, Gail. I understand you need some help. I'm like, oh, this is just fucking great. <laughs> I'm butt naked from the waist down. There's shit everywhere. I'm like, this is quite the first impression, huh? Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> So Gail comes in, uh, a female bartender comes in, she's got a mop, she starts going to town. Gail now has my black trousers that were on the ground. She's now got them up by the sink trying to scrape the shit splatter off them. I'm still trying to write down the stall and the door and everything. I can't get the smell of shit out of my nose. 
Christine comes back in. She's like, hey, just so you know, uh, your opening act is finished, but don't worry. The owner is on stage killing time until you're ready. I'm like, oh my God, I still got to go on stage. I totally forgot about that part. I got to get my shit together. <laughs> Right, because I'm the headliner. People actually came to see me. There is no plan B, right? I gotta get it together and get the smell of shit out of my nose. So Gail gives me back my black trousers. Now they're black trousers with little bits of toilet paper and napkin and shit splat on them. So I walk back to the comedy club and I'm like, whoa! I can do this, I'm a professional, I can do this, I can do this, woo! So uh, I walk into the club, somebody gives the owner the old thumbs up, she's ready to go sign. So I get my introduction, I go running up on stage, I get up onto my box, I turn to the audience, and right in the front row was the woman with the red sequin top and her two friends. We just locked eyes, and I was like, hey! I mean, of all the comedy clubs in all the world, these bitches are sitting right up in the front! Oh my god, okay, so first, this has happened over 10 years ago. Over 10 years ago, and I've only just been able to talk about it. Yeah, I think I suffer from like post-traumatic shit disorder. <laughs> but it is quite therapeutic. That's what comedy is. It's a very therapeutic thing, you know, getting it out, <laughs> literally. You know, plus obviously, like I couldn't, oh, for months I was, I was losing sleep. I was just reliving it over my head. And then it came around Christmas time and my best mate, we were sitting around at Christmas just getting pissed up, you know, and we we're with family and friends and Pam was like, hey, tell me about the time you shit yourself. <laughs> you asshole. Plus, I feel like I need to get it out there, right? Because I'm in show business. When, you know, you know, I'm hoping to be big and famous one day. Well, famous. <laughs> so I feel like I need to get the story out first. Because right now I can picture these three women sitting around a campfire with their grandkids talking about the day they saw a midget explode. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I finished the show and then I got the hell out of there. Yeah, I had to do an entire hour on stage, an entire hour of all like happy, happy, joy, joy, like nothing was wrong, right? I couldn't get the smell of shit out of my nose. I was stressed out big time. So the minute I was done, I got out of that comedy club, got back to my hotel room, I closed the door, start crying, you know, start taking my clothes off because I'm going to have a shower, you know. And I had my hair piled up on the top of my head. It was in a ponytail. So I go to take my hair out of my ponytail and realize the entire top of my head was caked in shit. Because apparently when I was wiping down the stall, I forgot about my midget arms. That's right, I was a total shithead. <laughs>